two, one, action. The final and tenth episode of Barn Talk, season one, here in Fort Myers, Fenway South, sitting here with Boston Red Sox farm director, also my big brother, Brian Abraham. Brian, how are you doing? Great, uh, I've watched a bunch of these, very excited to be a part of uh, this new uh, tradition of many B and Barn Talk, pretty, pretty excited. Yeah, this is our, our second road game. First road game at Northeastern, uh, now in Florida, we're on the road. Missing any B, Scott B, but we're here, we're getting it in. Um, so, like I said, now, you know, farm director for the Red Sox, but you've had had a long road here. Um, so, why don't you explain, uh, you know, the flyover at the moment. I mean, this is, this is any B, though, you know? It's just, you never know what's going to happen. Um, just tell us a little bit about, you know, your road to, uh, to where you're at today. Sure. Uh, I think a somewhat unique one. Uh, decent high school baseball player, really bad college baseball player, um, but I was lucky enough to be able to catch and throw a little bit. Uh, got lucky enough to be afforded the opportunity to go down to, to Blue Jays spring training in 2007. Caught in the bullpen a little bit through a little batting practice. Next thing I knew I was uh, you know, the, the video coordinator for the major league team in, in 2007. Um, lucky enough to form some relationships with the coaches, with the players, um, did some simple statistical analysis for, for the major league staff. Uh, ended up going to scout school the following year and really I think kind of uh, really created our, our major league video advance area with the Blue Jays. Um, where I provided uh, advanced reports along with the coaches, to the players, to the staff, um, along with throwing BP, catching bullpens, um, kind of a, a multi-faceted role, a little bit of everything um, was available for staff and players when needed. Um, but an incredibly uh, good learning experience being in the clubhouse on a day-to-day basis, major league clubhouse, you know, dealing with the, the ups and the downs of the players, the, the, the intricacies of uh, putting together a roster, putting together a lineup, planning for series, planning for a, a, a game on a nightly basis, and really the grind of a major league season, the ups and the downs uh, for everyone uh, that entails. Uh, John Farrell ended up becoming the manager of the Blue Jays, formed a pretty good relationship with him. Uh, he went to the Red Sox uh, in the winter of 2012, 2013. Uh, the way things worked out, he uh, uh, asked me to join the Red Sox as major league bullpen catcher. Um, certainly was uh, nervous to do as someone who could catch a little bit but not great um, I was better I was better accepted, accepted the role was the major league bullpen catcher for the Red Sox in 13-14 uh, still I World think, Series champs 2013 first, 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 champ. of, first of two World Series rings um, luckily enough and uh, this still some, did some of the advanced work on the video side still provide that with coaches and players but was in the bullpen on a nightly basis ended up uh, becoming a part of our, our replay team when the replay became a part of Major League Baseball. And then after the season 2014, interviewed for assistant farm director. Uh, moved into the front office uh, under the guidance of Ben Sherrington and our farm director, Ben Crockett. Ultimately became director of Marley League Ops and then uh, uh, a couple off seasons ago became director of player of Baltimore right now where we see our, our Marley League system. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. You know, I have to pinch um, myself sometimes. Right? Yeah, I mean, just sitting here, you know, we have some big leaguers sitting on the field behind us. J.D. Martinez, don't know if you've ever heard of him. Um, decent player, Alex Verdugo, J.B.J. Um, so just, you know, for me, you know, being able to be here is and, and kind of share, you know, some experiences with you throughout has been, has been awesome on my end, um, and, you know, learning from you. Um, but... So moving through those different roles, how, um, you know, going from uh, in the locker room, you know, in the clubhouse, you know, a staff, a staff member in a big league clubhouse to then kind of going the opposite and going front office and going, uh, you know, into player development. What, what was the biggest challenge for you going into player development? I think uh, ultimately what a lot of this comes down to in terms of our position in terms of the front office. There's obviously a lot of information, numbers, and, and managing uh, uh, salaries and um, you know, roster moves that come into play. But what, what it, I think it boils down to is relationships. 
relationships. Yeah. And uh, you know, one of the things I I learned being on major league staff and being around major league players is that the people we see on TV are great baseball players and they do a lot of things really well. They have good nights, they have bad nights, but at the end of the day, they're people. Um, they're looking for feedback, they're looking for constructive criticism, they're looking for positive affirmation as well. And every player is different. Every player has a different situation, whether it be family, whether it be personal life, whether that be you know how they feel that current current day. You know, I think one of the things I've learned is sometimes we as fans and, and, and lovers of this game, a guy goes over four, strikes out two times, and it's a really bad day. And it might not be because he wasn't trying his best at night. Maybe it's because he had a bad day at home. Yeah. And obviously, just putting that in perspective, I think has translated all the player development. Um, I think the foundation of what I do along with the coaches, our coordinators, and our staff is really just building relationships and building the trust from the ground up. So when a player gets here, getting to know them on a personal level, um, allowing them to be a part of the Red Sox family, what we do, trying to ultimately maximize their potential as, as, as human beings and as baseball players is what our goal is. Yeah, and I think, you know, we, we talk about that a lot, even you know, on the amateur side, you know, dealing with younger kids, um, you know, or college players. Baseball is all about relationships, at, and I think it's you know cool to hear, even at you know the highest level. Um, you know, I think the, the connections you build with people, you know, the trust you build makes that working environment so much easier, so much more fluid. And, you know, being down here the last few days and kind of being able to watch from the outside, you interact with your staff and even some of the players. Um, you know, you can tell there's definitely a you know a connectivity, um, you know, amongst. Um, you know, players and coaches. It's not just players talking to players, but it's, you know, there, there's a good rapport. Um, and I think that's, that's so important to having success. Um, so, obviously you're not on the amateur side a ton, but, you know, you see after you guys draft kids and you get, you know, players in the organization, you know, you have young players. You have your, you know, your Marcelo Myers that are 18, you know, that are your Blaze Jordans, these Nick Yorks, you know, these young kids. Um, you know, what are things that you look out of, look for in your young players? And I'm sure it's different with, you know, your expectations of a first rounder are probably going to be different than, you know, a 20th rounder. But what are some things that, you know, some keys that you guys look for? Um, or is it just, hey, we need to get better in general? I mean, I think for most younger players coming in, whether it be high school or college, you know, some fundamental things where you're expecting is. You know, creating a routine, consistency, you know, for a lot of high school guys, a lot of it's just getting stronger, understanding what it takes to, to get work in the weight room. You know, playing a season that takes 140 plus games is a lot on the you know, physical toll on the body for you know, strength wise and condition wise. I think one of the things that we talk to our players a lot about, and I think is incredibly hard to do for all of us, is self evaluation. Understanding your strengths, understanding your weaknesses. What you feel like you need to do better, what you feel like you do well, and continue to improve upon, and I think those are conversations that we have based in conversations with our our amateur group. Um, you know, the short amount of time we get to be with some of our newer draft picks, our assignees, um, get to know them, what they have to say. You know, we want to hear their opinion, what they think they do well, what they struggle with, and we're able to provide our opinion. Some of it is um, analytically, we'll be able to have a better idea of what guys do well. Some of it is you know strength testing wise, so we you know have more resources. And in the areas of sports science, uh, strength conditioning, we have ways to measure how strong someone is from when they get to us to the, toward the end of the year. Um, not just you know, body weight or body fat or just you know, muscle mass, there's, there's more to it, there's power, um, there's, there's speed, there's agility, all those areas we're able to measure and be able to track over the course of the season. Uh, but to me, self, self-evaluation is, is really important. Um, and I think along with that, as I said earlier, the, the ability to have a routine and sticking to a plan. You know, every player is going to be different. That's one of the things we really stress here with the Red Sox. It's an individualized plan. We sit down with every single player at the start of spring, talk to them about you know, their past year, whether it be with an amateur group or another team, um, and then their plan moving forward. You know, specific goals that they need to work on and improve upon to ultimately get, get better. And, um, you know, it, it's cliche, but it's getting better every day. And, and smaller things, not looking at the bigger picture always, like, hey, of course you want to be a big leader, yeah. but what can I do better in rookie ball or eight ball to be a better eight ball player? Yeah. And then maximizing that and continue to get forward, uh, move forward and be better um, every day. Yeah, I, 
think that's cool to hear because, I mean, again, when we're going through whether it's the recruiting process with kids or even now kind of the recruiting process in high school or whether you're, you know, we're in tryout season in New England, so whether you're making JV, varsity, um, you know, we've had a, had a couple players in the last week that, you know, probably weren't evaluated great. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, everything happens for a reason. But to understand, you know, who you are as a player, who you are, uh, you know, as a person, but to, to be realistic, um, I, I think that's so important and, um, for young guys. And again, obviously, it's, it's, it's even more important as you continue to, to grow in the game. Um, that's that's terrific. Um, yeah. Okay, so a couple more. I'm gonna ask a couple fun, couple fun questions. So um, you've done some really just some really cool things, right? You've thrown the home run derby to Jose Bautista. You've, you know, in the bullpen when Tory Hunter, Big Poppy is a grand slam. Tory Hunter goes over the wall. Um, two World Series. You know, just being in you know the year one of the Yankees, the new Yankee Stadium. You know. Um, What's what's the coolest experience that you've had since being a professional baseball? That's a tough one. Um, a lot of really good memories in a short amount of time. I've been very lucky, very blessed. Uh, actually, in some ways, like thinking about it, makes me pretty emotional about, about a lot of things. But um, in 2013, we won the World Series, having our our family be on the field when we won. Uh, He's almost time. crying. I know, He's almost about, crying. This is about real. It. But, this is uh, real. Uh, having our family be on the field, and you know, uh, at the time was unsure if we should do this, but we brought everyone into the clubhouse to pop champagne. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, yeah, you know, hey, never get a chance. Never, don't. Not sure if I'll get a chance to do this again. No. Um, and you know, luckily enough, I was able to win a World Series, but in the office, so that was pretty special. Yeah. Um, all of our family, my wife, she was nine pregnant. months, nine yeah. months pregnant with Logan. Logan. Um, that was pretty cool. So. I'm, yeah, I mean, I, I was a junior in college, took a zero on a presentation. Thanks for that, Professor Singleton. <laughs> um, still got to be in the class, um, but that's something I'll, I know, I'll never forget. And again, our whole family being there, like it was, it was unbelievable. Um, and I guess the last thing I would say is for you know our young kids. For you know, we've obviously had some guys, you know start working in pro organizations, you know, a bunch of guys playing. Um, what advice do you have for, you know, guys or, you know, even even women? Um, you know, you've, you've hired, a, you know, a few women this off season um, as coaches. Um, wh what's your best piece of advice for getting your foot in the door in a, in a professional organization um, and kind of moving forward? I think one of the things I tend to tell young people is just watch baseball. Yeah. Um, I think so many times, you know, we want to write emails about what we've done and how, how we've done things and who we know and this and that. But to me, like, watching baseball and understanding the game is so important. One of the things I quickly realized when I got to pro ball is I did not know anything about baseball. Um, as much as we're taught, uh, taught when we're younger, as much as we talk about baseball, even as, as younger people, like, there are people in this game that have forgotten what we know. Yeah. And, you know, obviously, I'm lucky enough to be around a lot of staff members um, that... Uh, have been have seen a lot have been through a lot um, but I think that to me is one thing watching the game live on TV getting to know the game situations having a feel for how things work I think is incredibly important um, the other thing is I think you know be persistent it's something you want to do um, whether it be emails whether it be phone calls you know take advantage of people you know like you know sometimes it's about timing sometimes it's about um, having a recommendation sometimes it's about um, just being in the right place right time which was you know certainly case for, for myself kind of a combination of, of all those things but um, you know I do think it's you know the, the hot thing is to want to be in baseball and it's not just for people that have to play baseball which I think is really cool yeah. um, you can have an understanding of, of information you can uh, be able to write code you can um, be a scout there's so many different areas where you don't have to play baseball to be a part of baseball which is pretty special um, but I think you have to have a passion for and it's a unique, unique game. I think we continue to find ways to grow the game and get kids to love it. Um, I'm you know, doing that with my son now to try to get him, get him to love a game that he fail a lot, is a little bit slower, um, and you know sometimes it can be hard. tough to watch. It's, it's yeah. really hard, but to me, having a passion for this, to be able to do it every day, 
you're gonna want to do it. And to me, the passion is number one. I love my job. I love the Red Sox. I'm very lucky to be doing it for the hometown team. But if I didn't have a passion for baseball, there's no chance I could do it. So, to me, to be able to do that, you, you want to have a job, something that you love to do, and make it not feel like a job. No matter what, it's always gonna feel like a job sure. at times. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, to have a passion for the game and to want to continue to improve upon it um, and, and, and get people better and, and love it as well, I think it's really important. Yeah, I think you know, even even for us, you know. Like I have, you know, I have a dream job. You know, I get to I like to think it's similar to what you do, just on an amateur side. Um, you know, even big leaguers have to have to be in high school at some point. You know, I, I like to tell people that all the time. Um, but you know, having that passion, I think that that passion gets you going in the morning, and you know, keeps you wanting to get better and you know, continue to help people. Um, and I think it all comes back to it, it's a relationship business. You know, it's it's. It, Creating relationships with people, and um, you know that that can take you a long way. Um, it's it's the reason why we're here right now. Um, so, thank you. Final episode of Barn Talk. Um, we have this episode is not sponsored by Roback. We're both wearing Roback, but if Roback wants to sponsor us, we'll take it. Um, well, that's a wrap. Thanks, Brian. Thanks Appreciate for having it. Okay. Hung it out. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm gonna go uh, hit a couple homers here, quick. Peace.